Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, what I think that we need to do, both uh, we here and you over there, uh, of course, it was a very strong democratic seat in Massachusetts, and we all know that. And I have to say, I regard a very suspicious family who've been running it for some time, but that's by the by. What I would suggest is that those people who swung, those people who used to vote Democrat and no longer do, and voted Republican, it's not just enough to vote vote Republican or vote for change. You have to write to the Democratic Party and those in power and tell them why you did it. Otherwise, right, they will go there. believing it's an accident. We're going to come back from break and continue along that line. And we're going to also get into what happened at Copenhagen and how the enemy's regrouping. Stay with us. Member of the European Parliament from England, Godfrey Bloom is our guest for the rest of the hour. Honored to have him joining us. If you look at how these bureaucracies operate, it's almost identical. Uh, and, and the people send a message to Washington. Hey, Bush, we don't like your big government corruption, your Patriot Act. So they put Obama in. A lot of Republicans voted for him. And then they go, oh, my God, this is even worse. And then we'll get another Republican in and it'll get it even worse. And England has been going through this forever, longer than us. And that's what the UK IP, the UK Independence Party, is all about. They're now one of the biggest parties in England, uh, gaining ground, uh, because the people have figured out that the Tories or the Conservatives put out different rhetoric, but they're owned by the same special interest as Labour. Uh, and so the people of England are really starting to wake up, and so we can learn lessons from what they've gone through in England. Uh, am I accurate in saying that, Mr. Bloom? Indeed you are. Um, one of the problems that we have, I'm a financial economist by profession, and I sit on the Economic Affairs Committee, uh, and it was interesting that the biggest party in uh, the United Kingdom is the Conservative Party, and I was taken uh, aside this very afternoon and being told to stop rocking the boat. I was, uh, I was being too forceful at uh, meetings, so on and so forth. So the establishment are now starting to run scared. But what do we have a real problem here, uh, and I don't quite know how we're going to deal with this, and this is a problem that I haven't solved and we haven't solved, is the amount of disinformation or lack of information that they get back in the United Kingdom. So, for example, today I'm talking to you about our new commissars who are going to now uh, be responsible for 75% of the laws made uh, in the United Kingdom. But most people still don't really know that. And, of course, we have public service broadcasting the BBC who had an absolutely magnificent record in the war for telling the truth, even when the truth hurt, of course have been completely subverted by this place. Uh, what most people listening in England uh, to your show, and that there are many, won't know, for example, is that the European Commission Bank has lent the BBC €100,000 on an interest-free basis. Now, they won't know that. Um, there's all sorts of things. The swine flu thing you've been talking about is interesting as well. They are still advertising uh, in England the swine flu vaccination, although everybody knows it to be bad, fraudulent, uh, and, 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 a, and a scare that never actually happened. But in the United Kingdom, what is becoming common knowledge now, even in Germany and France, I have to tell you, is not common knowledge in the United Kingdom. And I spotted this six months ago when I said this swine flu was a great scam, and none of the uh, English newspapers would handle it because it was too hot to handle, because if I'd been wrong, and of course everybody had died of swine flu, um, you know, they would be held liable, so I couldn't get the story away. So most ordinary people in England have no idea that swine flu is a scam. Well, I want to talk more about that, but, and what this European Union Commission is saying, because they're actually doing the right thing, you know, their own doctors and people coming out saying this is a fraud, and there's talk of indictments with some of the World Health Organization people involved making profits. It's come out that more than 50% of the government experts hired by the federal government were making hundreds of thousands of dollars apiece as employees or consultants to the vaccine makers. I mean, this is classic fraud. But going back to what you just said, the average Brit, because we talk to them, we have a lot of listeners over there that listen on the Internet and shortwave and satellite, uh, they say their neighbors still don't even know that the European Union is run by a bunch of unelected bureaucrats and they don't even know that they're making at least 75% of the laws and rulings. Same thing here. 
Since 2005, we've been under SPP, Security Prosperity Partnership. The internal documents have been released. We are under a North American Union with a private governing council and, and, and bureaucrats from Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. They're setting even the color of highway signs, uh, where these inland ports are, uh, trade deals, uh, all, all these special favors for their cronies, and the general public still doesn't even know that this is happening. This is absolutely right, Alex, and uh, this is again one of the main problems because your average, your average chap, your average Joe Sixpack, I think you call them there, which yes. sometimes calls them the man on the clap of omnibus over here, which is a rather quaint expression. But he reads the newspapers, uh, he looks at BBC News, so on and so forth, but none of this uh, information is coming through those channels. Uh, and of course, Middle England don't tend to, in general, do much blogging or internet stuff. They tend to read the newspaper uh, and they tend to listen to the BBC. So they're being drip fed misinformation on a constant basis. And when I bring people over to the European Parliament, as I do, uh, I bring a busload over. I bring over Middle England businessmen. These are well read, intelligent people. These aren't morons, Alex. These are intelligent Middle England guys. Um, and they say to me when they go back, they say, how could it be that I didn't know? It's, it's a scientifically crafted propaganda fraud. Stay there. Long segment coming up. Member of the European Union Parliament from England, Godfrey Bloom is our guest. We're going to get into a host of issues. And what's up next on the land-grabbing communist agenda?